I think I'm ready to go. You ready for this? I, I'm ready to ask the hard hitting questions. Oh, please let me know. Hit me with anything. I'm here. You're interrupting uh, Riverdale. So really, you're <laughs> uh, yeah, what you got? Okay. So I know that you were furloughed. I'm very sorry I about that. I, That's okay. Can you explain for my class, like, what that means for you? And, um, oh, and what you do, like, a little autobiography about yourself real quick for everyone. Uh, yeah, so um, I am a WNBA reporter who uh, maybe used to slash maybe currently does work for SB Nation. Um, I've been there since I was an intern when I was a junior in college, so it's been a little more than four years I've been with the company. Um, I've done everything there, basically. I cover, well, I wrote about the NFL for a bit, covered the NBA, um, covered college basketball. I've bounced around a little bit, but WNBA is my home, and that's where I want to uh, keep going with. Uh, what was your other question? Just what you do. Yeah, um, so yeah, I'm kind of figuring out exactly what I do. I uh, I report, I aggregate, I sometimes do interviews on Twitch or God knows what. Uh, I think journalism is kind of expanding by the minute, and you just kind of have to play around with different platforms to figure out exactly what you like to do and what you want to do and uh, what uh, what will make you some money because uh, that's always the toughest part I think about this industry. Uh, but that is that is what I do, and what furlough means for me is that I am not getting paid by my company for three months. So that started on May first, that ends on July thirty first. I do not know if I will have a job on August first or not. That's the first part about furlough. So in the meantime, I have been trying to find ways to keep myself involved in the industry and continue to make money, um, which is why I launched a newsletter. And it's why eventually when I think I have the mental capacity for it, I will start uh, freelancing. I subscribed to your newsletter when you first tweeted about it. I really Thanks. love it. My favorite my favorite story is when you talk about um, the Subert Diana Taurasi um, Instagram Live. My favorite. That was really special. I did not have the privilege to watch that, but um, to see what they actually talked about was pretty interesting. And my favorite part of that is when they talked about um, Sabrina Unescu coming into the league, like who they're backing. The comments for that was really interesting. Um, do you have a take on who's going to be the rookie of the year? Who would I pick as rookie yes. of the year? Um, that's really hard. Uh... I think I'm going to pick Sabrina as Rookie of the Year. I I think my second choice would be Sabrina. I think Sabrina still wins it because she's going to have the most attention and she's she can do everything at every level. I, I see what Sue was saying about Kennedy Carter being the best player in the class. Eventually, I don't think that comes now. Maybe that comes five years from now. Um, my choice is Sabrina for Rookie of the Year, and if she doesn't win it, I think Satu does. It's a very interesting take. All right. So re more recently for me, I've been paying attention to incoming freshmen um, for college hoops, and I know who your favorite is. Um, would you want to talk about that for a bit? Yeah, it's actually because I'm just getting into – uh, the younger prospects that sort of isn't like in my range usually for coverage. So I'm just starting to pick up on who the best high school kids are. And when obviously I saw all the page highlights, so I was like, all right, this kid's fucking nasty. It's time to actually dig in and see what she's about. Uh, yeah, Paige just checks all my boxes of what I want um, in a basketball player because she's flashy as hell. She's really productive, and she just talks a ton of shit. Like, everyone I've talked to, even that's just worked around her, been around her, has just been like, yo, this kid has it. Like, past even the basketball skills. Like, there are a ton of really good basketball players, um, but we're going to always remember Diana Taurasi, right? Because Diana Taurasi is the shit-talking, like, 
just like all around like star on and off the court she doesn't give a fuck and that's sort of that's what i love and i see it i mean i see it in diana i see it in Liz Cambage, and i see it in Paige. um as you know the more i've watched of her and I, i'm thinking that we're going to see a whole lot more of it when she's at uconn she's got the national spotlight on her uh, at all times but everything from everybody who's been around that kid has been like she's the one I agree with that a lot. Um, before this interview, I actually watched a few of her highlights because I wanted to see what you were talking about. I've kind of known about her for a bit, but I was like, I don't know like what's happening here. She's the real deal. Honestly, I'm I'm gonna agree with you. She's She's a lot of fun. She's she's gonna she's gonna be able to take that spotlight sort of like Sabrina did. Um, and it's gonna be really exciting because I think that's the next that's sort of the way that basketball has been trending, right? Like we saw it with Zion um, on the men's side where he was this giant superstar before he even stepped foot in Duke. And we saw it with Lamelo Ball in the same way. And I think that we're going to start building giant fan bases and audiences around these kids before they even get to college. Because, you know, in high school, you can tell a lot of the time you can tell who's going to be a stud in college. So like from the early days, like we've been talking about Zion since he was like, what, 14 or 15. Paige, kind of similar. She's been on that spotlight uh, for a long ass time. So I'm excited. I think that's great. We're going to be able to take a strong high school fan base, have her have her fans follow her to UConn where she'll gain more fans. And four years later, when she's won however many championships, she's going to take that audience and carry it to the WNBA. So it's great that all three levels are actually, you know, being able to prop up the talent for the first time, really. She's just so interesting. I don't know what it yeah. is. I have no idea what it is, but she's just it's so interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's her personality. I've never met her, but from everything I've watched and talked to people about her, she she's just cool, man. I think being cool is is like a big part of it. We watch sports because we like the people. Um, we obviously like their skill and their talent, and we love to watch that. But what actually gives us a deeper connection to somebody is liking the personality, and Paige has got a lot of personality. I was watching the slam online video earlier. Um, just like her and how she is with her brother. That's like, that's all you yeah. want to see, honestly. She's cool, man. Yeah. All right. Can I talk? Can I ask you about the haircut deal? <laughs> so I don't know if people in my class know this, but I've been following online. Um, you were on Good Morning America, is that correct? Um, I was on ABC's like Worldwide Now or something like that, and uh, and then I was on the Tamron Hall show. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. So you didn't think about maybe wrapping a towel around. Listen, 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 everyone learns their lessons in certain ways. And for me, I've got to actually do things to learn those lessons. Um, so no, I didn't. And you know what? I can blame my roommate for that too, because she didn't have any ideas for it either. She just sat there and videotaped it as it was happening. So it wasn't just me. It's the coverage we need right now, honestly. Those like listen, we're getting desperate at that point. <laughs> it's just weird how things can trend like that. All of a sudden, yeah, the laughing stock of the I internet. Did, I did not think I'd be on TV for that, and nor did my parents. So, <laughs> speaking of social media in the internet, I have to ask. Also, go for it. WNBA Twitter. Um, teams attacking you. What's that like? Yeah, they're kind of relentless, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird because I didn't. I, I I know the the guy who runs the Aces Twitter account. So when he started um, ganging up on me, I like you know, I I'd met him before, so it wasn't as weird. When other teams who I didn't know their whoever was running their <laughs> social accounts started jumping in, I was like, all right, I don't really know what's going on here. Uh, no, it's fun though. I like it. Um, you know, it's uh, it's. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. It helps me. Um, it helps establish me as, as like a, a person in the space, and also it's fun. And I think that it's sort of necessary now because we're all kind of a little bit, you know, we're we're not exactly happy right now. We don't have basketball. We don't have a lot going on. Um, so I liked I like to hear from them. I like when they when they bully up on me, but it's good. I mean, 
it, it encourages more coverage. I'm always honest. I think that's why um, I became the target because I didn't give everybody great grades um, because not everyone deserves great grades. So uh, I can agree with that. That's how it went, and I think uh, I think the teams around the league are better. So I just want to bring up really quick. Um, the first time that I ever heard about your work is when I was writing a paper about the WNBA for English class last year. Um, our junior year in English class, we did like a passion project. And so I decided equal pay, WNBA, NBA, all that kind of stuff. Great and, topic. and I used your article, um, I have it up here. WNBA players have become targets of fake pay disparity quotes on social media. Here's what they're actually yep. arguing for. I think ever since I read that article, I've gained so much respect for you and what you've written. And, and that's why I'm kind of glad I'm doing this interview to hear more. Just from besides the tweets and the here's basketball um, newsletters. So I just want to put that out there real quick. Oh, thank you. I mean, that's great. That that. I'm glad that I was, you know, able to uh, help out your you, and uh, that's the that's the point of a lot of what I write is, you know, I have some personality driven stuff, but the end goal is to actually inform people on what the hell is actually going on because I think a lot of those, um, honestly, I think a lot of people in the industry are kind of half into the WNBA because it looks good, so they'll have a reporter who maybe covers the NBA who then drifts over to the WNBA whenever a certain topic pops up, but they're not really important, so. Um, I love how I was once given the space to be able to actually really care about the league and only the league and learn enough stuff to make sure I'm spinning out and, and make sure everybody gets the right information. Because I think that's super frustrating to the players from, you know, the players I've talked to is that a lot of what they've asked for or what they were asking for at the time, um, it wasn't being accurately told. Uh, and I think in that piece I told um, a lot of the reasons behind it, at least a lot of my theories behind it. Uh, and it's very frustrating. Uh, I know the player, what the players were asking for wasn't unfair in, in any way, but people want to pile on because Twitter sort of, uh, the Twitter algorithm takes nicely to people for engagement, no matter if it's good or bad. So welcome to the problem. Kind of sucks out. Um, even though it's mostly men, how they are continually bringing down women in the league, even though they're working probably 10 times harder than the, these people are. Um, it's it's really irritating to me sitting um, on my phone and like, oh, here's another kitchen joke. Like, that's so creative. Yeah, I think it's getting worse than kitchen jokes too, which yeah. is a problem. There's a lot like, well, I don't see a lot now, but especially on TikTok, we have these, um, there's these trends of, uh, guy saying that when they're um become married to a WNBA WNBA player that they're gonna have to work four jobs in order to support them like stuff like that it just doesn't make sense honestly. yeah it's trash and you know it starts it starts uh it starts when you're younger when you see all these you know asshole even guys in media um who cover the men's sports are just you know, perpetuating the same false information and garbage jokes and you know then that gets passed down to younger people and then younger people think it's okay so um listen i can't i can't stop it all and i'm not going to i'm not going to be able to stop it all but at least if i can play my part in getting the people who want to be educated on what's actually happening like i'm, I'm gonna do that one thing that um definitely made me really upset i think it was Adam Schefter, I don't know who it was, but the, the comments on real sports um, with the NFL draft, uh, yep. that irked me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't listen. I don't think, I don't think Schefter is a bad person. I don't think that he was actively thinking um, about the WNBA when he made that tweet, but it just kind of goes to show you what, and it, you know, what, what in the periphery, how these people actually, you know, are consuming and thinking of the sport considering um adam is probably one of the highest paid people at SB Nation, at, at espn so uh to see one of their highest paid and most front-facing people not remember right away that a WNBA draft was on the network that pays him i think it was six days before that nfl draft when he had that tweet it's really disappointing so you know the only way you can sort of respond to that is you know call him out for it and 
he apologized and you know respect the apology afterwards and hopefully he doesn't make that same mistake again because when he blasts something out like that he has a follower base that is i think it's something close to eight million people so you know eight million people are then registering that information as true and you know what they should believe because a lot of people look up to Adam in the industry and a lot of sports fans follow Adam for his information and his things. So uh, I don't think he did it on purpose, but it is important to call it out. That's a nice response to that. I appreciate how you still respect him, even though his word choice was not the best in the world. Um, but speaking about the WNBA draft, I was not a fan and I'll tell you why. I I love the coverage on Sabrina. I love how the first rounders got to be able to be shown on TV. I love how it was on ESPN instead of ESPN2. But the problem is them just showing names on the screen without having them announce. How, how do you yeah, feel like, about all I that? I don't like that either. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that either. I mean, I think... I wouldn't have liked it regardless. I think I didn't like it more because it was in uh, just looking at the time and space of when it was during a pandemic when there was nothing else happening. I think that was the most insulting and frustrating part to me is they sort of crammed it all together in a two hour segment and, you know, gave Kobe a lot of um, airtime that could have maybe been used otherwise. Um, and not to say that it shouldn't have included that. I'm just saying they could have included both things and extended the program a little bit longer. Uh, I think that was frustrating. And then also, I knew that the NFL draft was about to get, what, three days worth of coverage and uh, countless hours. I don't even know how long, how many hours the NFL draft gets uh, to go really deep, like hundreds of players deep into their draft. And knowing that the WNBA's was uh, 36 players, and I think that they recorded it a little bit before um, like, I don't think it was all entirely live, so they could have found spaces to get players um, introduced to the world because that's how we start, right? People don't know who players are until we tell them who they are. Uh, and that ESPN spotlight was the big spotlight. That's where people were going. That's where people were learning. It was at a time when everyone was home. No one could do anything, and everyone wants sports. So that should be the time when you're maximizing your output of WNBA stuff because you're trying to inform people about um, a sport they might not know about, and now they have the time and space to learn about. Uh, so that's why I was frustrated by it. Um, I know that not everybody thinks that way. Um, and also there's, there is the point that out of 36 players, a lot of those players are not going to make rosters. Third-round picks are definitely going to make rosters. Most second-round picks won't make rosters, and not even every first round pick is guaranteed a roster spot. So I get it, um, but I was still disappointed by it. It's kind of sad how um, these players get drafted and then they don't get the opportunity to play on the team. I know there's limited spots. Um, yep. It's just, I wish there was like a G League of some sort that the league could implement. Yeah, um, I mean, I think the league, I think the league is ready for expansion, and yeah, I mean, eventually having a uh, developmental league would be key because there are what three hundred and forty something college women's college D one teams, and I think men have maybe a few more, but it's about the same. And they have a roster pool of sixty people who get drafted, and the W has much fewer. And NBA rosters can carry fifteen players per team. WNBA rosters can only carry twelve, so. A lot of really good talent gets left out um, of the league, which sucks. And then they have to go abroad, and a lot of the times they don't get the same opportunities to come back. So it's really hard being an undrafted WNBA player. If you could add a team, where would you add one? I thought about this the other day. Um, I think I would hear cases for three cities, or maybe four. I would pick between – I think Canada would be the most – um, if they got a team maybe in Toronto, just because that's a huge fan base that everyone can rally around, and I would have loved to see them build off the momentum of Kawhi winning the championship there, and people in Canada caring more about basketball. I think the Bay Area is a place where a lot of players want a team, um, in San Francisco or Oakland, somewhere around there. Uh, Miami would be an excellent spot for a team, and Philadelphia. I think one of those four spots uh, is where they look to next. I really like that Toronto answer, actually. You know, now that I think about it a lot more, um, soccer has done really well in, in Canada. Um, 
basketball, yep. especially right now, that's perfect timing. I don't know when they would possibly um, expand, um, but Toronto is definitely a very great place to um, set up. Yeah, I mean, I don't think expansion is coming soon. I don't think it was coming soon before the pandemic hit. So afterwards, I don't know how far back that's going to set the timeline. But I don't know. Uh, We're seeing, listen, maybe it'll be good in the interim because we're going to see a lot of super teams uh, compete in the W because literally everybody on the WNBA roster is insanely good. Um, But it sucks in the in the bigger scope past like fan viewing, knowing that there's a lot of talent that isn't going to get the same opportunity that it would if they were a dude, honestly. Do you think there will be a special case like Megan Gustafson, who was cut last year and was brought back? I think it was because of injury. Yeah. I mean, that a lot of that depends on, uh, what happens if they try to play in 2020 or not? Because I think a lot of players who don't live in America are not going to come over to America to play in this WNBA season. That's my guess. We've already seen uh, Jisoo Park from the Aces say that she's not going to play. Um, it might just be hard to get players from overseas into America, depending on, again, a million different things. But if that's the case, more people are going to get an opportunity to play this year. Um dollars so it's cheaper to bring in a a rookie than it is to sign a mid-tier veteran so maybe that'll be the case for some rookies but i don't know i think it's hard to tell until we get a clear answer on what's happening in 2020 and how the pandemic is going to change salary cap and payouts in 2021 and beyond so i know how other leagues are trying to um find a location or two to play at do you think that the w is going to do the same thing like share a facility um in vegas for example or phoenix or Orlando? Um, should or will because i think those are different questions do you do you think it is possible that they will do that i think it's possible um I, I don't know how likely it is, but I don't want to rule it out for being a possibility because the league is still talking about a zillion different scenarios. So it is still possible. It's going to be really difficult. I think it's going to be difficult for any sports league to play in 2020, honestly. Um, but basketball especially, just because uh, the players are so close to each other and um, you know it, it, it could spread really quickly throughout a team. Uh, I remember in high school – just my high school basketball team, we all got the stomach virus. I think there's a 12-person team, and like 10 of us got it in one day. So I can only imagine an even, you know, an even deadlier disease. Like, uh, I don't know. The whole thing makes me very uncomfortable. But uh, I would not rule it out, it out for being a possibility. I know soccer is starting back up in Germany, and um, I think England is working towards doing that. Some other leagues, like in France and I believe Scotland, have called off their seasons. Um, I enjoy watching um, soccer. That's one of my favorite sports to watch, so it's good to see that right now. But I'm just not sure if these teams are ready for that. Yeah, I I think it's going to depend a lot. you know, I don't, I don't know the exact situations that the soccer teams are working with, but it's going to depend on the country and how, what PPE they have and the hospital capacity they have and a whole number of things. Uh, and America is going to be interesting because we're going to have these long, drawn-out battles, I think, between leagues and their players' unions, just fighting on specifics on what happens in a certain scenario. And it's going to be, I don't know, I think the next few weeks are going to be really intense. Um and I, I just I hope everyone's smart because, uh, as we know from the amount of athletes that have already tested positive, like just because you're in your 20s or young 30s and you're one of the best athletes in the world, it doesn't mean that you're not immune from this virus. I know some things are still going to be released. Um, I heard 2K is going to be released at the scheduled time. 
do you think that the game will be different than this year's release? Uh, I hope it's different. I don't know. I don't have any other information on what or if they're changing things. I do know that uh, Ronnie 2K did reach out to a couple of WMB reporters. Um, I wasn't on the list, so I'm not sure uh, what exactly is happening. But that makes me think that he has some information that things are going to change. I hope they do, because now there's no excuse. It's really discouraging, um, especially with such a popular game, that you can only do certain things with um, the W on the game. I did the single season run. It was really yeah, bad. Fun, right? About <laughs> I it's just it, it isn't fun. There was something about it that didn't make sense. Why would you have a single season for one league, but then you could have like an infinite amount of seasons for the NBA? Yeah, that's my point. I mean, I think uh, I wrote about it a little bit, but just like they have the technology to do it. Um, they were late to the game in the first place because uh, NBA Live had been doing it for two years before. So they had time. They just didn't do it. Um, they just didn't. And maybe, you know, maybe they're gearing up for it. And listen, if they started this, I don't know, five or six years ago, and they were the first place to come out with a WNBA version of their game, and they gave us what they gave us, I don't think I would have been as critical because I knew that they were, would have been building towards it. But 2K basically has a monopoly on the basketball, like, major platform market. No one's really buying NBA Live anymore. The game didn't even come out last year. Uh, so they had the money. They had the space. They have all the resources. They've proven it on the men's side. So I just, I didn't, I was critical because they could have debuted with something a lot more than what they gave us. And um, maybe that changes and uh, that would be great. But I also wish that 2K understood the magnitude of what they have to offer and how many people follow sports because they play the video game. Um, I think there's, a, even in the NBA, there's a large translation of that. People who just like playing with a certain team and then they'll start watching that certain team on TV when they play. Um, even you know, That's how you learn the rosters. It's how you learn how trades work. It's how you learn a whole bunch of things. So it'd be really dope if 2K went all out of the W because – Everyone's sitting at home right now. No one's got much to do. Everyone wants to be as close to a sport as possible. And video games are sort of that outlet. So if people started playing the WNBA version of the game, knowing who the players are, knowing who the teams are, maybe they'd be more likely to watch it when it's on TV. What's your favorite team to play as? Um, I love playing as Diana Taurasi. <laughs> so I guess I would say Phoenix. I'm a Sky fan, so I, I always go um, for the Sky. Uh, I went to the same school as Allie Quigley for two years. That's how I found out about okay. her. Yeah. Um, went to JCA for two years. It was awesome. Um, so many great stories about her and what she did for the school. I think my love for basketball at school translated to me knowing about the WNBA and just – watching games now um so that's who i go with i love that did you play um i played freshman year and then i was like you know what i'm not gonna play anymore i'm gonna do debate team and then i'm gonna do soccer <laughs> and that's what that's i it. did i love it and then i transferred schools um so i did that and now i play frisbee um yeah. you're all over the place jeez yeah, I've, I've played quite a few sports in my life. Um, couldn't That's really awesome. figure That's out. That's great. I wish I was better at more sports. I literally, basketball was the only sport I was good at, so I, I just stuck to it. So you played all of your high school years then? Uh, Defined play. I sat on the bench for a few, but um, I definitely was on the team for all four. I wish I could have stuck it out like that. I actually, I managed um, the girls' uh, varsity team. Uh, at my high school so that's fun as hell i mostly did film but it was really fun right. to be involved that was important unless not many of us were getting jobs actually playing the sport so film was important yeah it, it's such a nice environment honestly to be able to interact with everyone um i was the only senior um that was uh a part of the team managing uh there was another senior that was playing, so it was just two two seniors. 
So it's kind of nice to connect with the other senior there. Am oh, I? You broke up a little I bit. I broke up. That's why I keep leaning in a little bit. Yeah. I was talking about how it was just me and another senior on the team, and we kind of bonded over that. Not a lot of seniors are interested in playing at my school, um, or at least in my grade. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, sad truth. Um, I want to ask you a few more things. So, there's this online fad of Animal Crossing. And I'm very jealous of everyone that has a Switch. What made you get the game, and do you enjoy it? I do enjoy it. It's probably the only game I've been playing every day since quarantine. Um, I don't know. I got the Switch a couple of months ago, like before this whole thing hit, because uh, a lot of my friends from work had it. It seemed like fun, and I'm glad I did, because then they like basically sold out everywhere. So uh, I got lucky. Uh, but yeah, Animal Crossing is fun. It's just chill. It's like, it's very nice and warm and like, you, you can actually, it's made to like get you to play with other people and be constructive. So it's nice and it is a break from looking at the garbage on Twitter.com. Is Tom Nook a crook? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. The guy sucks, <laughs> but I paid, off my, I paid off all my loans, so he's not a problem anymore. I've been watching this YouTuber. His name is Jack Thepta Guy. Um, he is very funny. He named his island Hell with one L because Nintendo wouldn't name let him put the other L. And all he's been saying is Tom Nook is the devil. He's a crook. I'm like, it's probably true. true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. So you go on Twitch and you play um, 2K. Do you play anything else? No, so I'm not really big on video games, honestly. I only, I think the only uh, PlayStation games I even own are 2K, like every version since like I don't know, like 13. And uh, Kingdom Hearts is my favorite game. Uh, but besides that, I don't, I didn't really play video games that that much until we were forced to do nothing but stay in our houses. So that's been an uptick, but that's it. I'm more of a FIFA person. Um... I suck at FIFA. Like, I really suck at FIFA. I used to play it in college, and I was no fun, because I'd get fucking, i get my ass kicked. Um, that is my go-to game. 2K, I don't know. I just can't vibe with it right now. They're, I think it's the W, the way that they put it in the game. It's yeah, kinda... let's hope that 2K21 makes us feel a different way about it. Yeah. If you could, um... Choose the cover athletes, um, an NBA player and a WNBA player. Who would you put on there and why? Ooh. I think for the NBA, I would pick James Harden because I fucking love James Harden and he's polarizing as hell, and that would probably create a lot of memes. For the W, uh, I think I'd put Sabrina. Really? I, just, I, love, I listen. Yeah, ride the wave, man. I mean, she's like one of the most popular women's basketball players ever. So why cut that off now? She's a recognizable face, and I think that would get a lot of people into it. So uh, I don't think she will be the best player in the WNBA. Don't make, don't make it seem like that. I just think that she'd be a fun cover athlete. Yeah, Tarasi's the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully her back is all healed. But. Yeah. Um. That's such an interesting take on Sabrina. Okay. Were you surprised by um, her choice for Nike over Under Armour? Um, I'm actually not sure. Did she ever explain her reasoning behind anything? I don't know. Uh, listen, my whole thing is take the money. I hope Nike paid her the most money. That's what, that's what I would have done. That's probably what she did, honestly. Not going to lie. That's Can't blame her. probably what she did. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready for the signature shoe. I'm ready for everything. So am I. So am I. I hope she gets it. I think if there's anybody who should get it, it's her. Were you surprised on how she, her jersey and shirts sold out right away as she was picked first? Nope. No surprises. I don't think anybody should have been surprised. She's 
It's a real deal. Yeah. She's the best, one of the best college basketball players ever. She's likable as hell. She played for a big program like Oregon. She was all over the national spotlight in more ways than one. So, no, I, I, I think it was shitty that whatever the supplies were weren't enough because everyone should have anticipated that happening. I went on the website during the draft, and I was looking at my phone. I was like, oh, they're still dealt. I'm yeah, not surprised, right? I, I feel like it, it was a couple months ago, right, when Sabrina had to reach out to, who was it, Under Armour? I forget who even reps for again to be like, yo, where's my merch? Like, <laughs> stuff, stuff doesn't come out until Sabrina has to, like, demand for it. So, yeah, it, it's it's been this constant um, – and it's been a constant struggle, right, with people buying Sabrina merch, and that's crazy to me because she is the person you can make the most money from, so I don't get it. If you could, um, if you were the GM for any of the teams uh, a few years ago, let's say, let's go last year, who would you draft for your first round pick and why? Last year's draft class. Last year's draft class? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I would have said it at the time, but uh, Arike, right? I mean, Arike was taking what, like fifth? And we all know Arike's flaws, right? She's not a great defender, and she's not a high percentage shooter yet. But I kind of look at um, Arike in the same way that I look at Candy Carter as a prospect in that they both do a rare thing, which is create their own shots at a really high rate, even though they aren't the greatest shots because I think they need to work on their shooting mechanics. Um, they are really quick and they're really good at creating space between their defender and how they can launch up to take their shot. So uh, Arike would have been huge. I mean, if I'm talking about specifically for the aces, uh, I'm not even sure. They really, they really needed... The Jack Young pick always blew my mind because I, I don't think she fits that team well at all. But maybe I would have got a replay. I think I think I would have got a replay anyway. Okay, one last question. There are basically every team in the league is a super super team. There's so many stars on each team. Who do you think, if the season didn't happen, who would win the chip and why? If the season this. You're asking who this year's season, 2020 if, if 2020 happens. If it if it doesn't happen, if it gets canceled, who would your pick be? Uh, I think I think I would pick the Mystics to repeat. Uh, I think the Storm are close. It would not surprise me if the Storm won. I think the Mystics still have the better team, and I think they have the best coach in the league. Um. So I'm going to go Mystic still. I think that's a pretty hot take. Yeah, who would you pick? I, I'm not going to say the Sparks because I they I think they would choke. They choked last year or this past season. It um, depends on Candace. Candace wasn't Candace last year. Yeah, that is very true. Um... I really thought for a second that the Aces were going to take it all. I think I would go with the Aces. I love the Aces, but I don't love I don't love what they did for agency. Yeah, I don't I don't like it either, but I think they have enough potential to win. Listen, you got Liz, you always have a chance. Yes. I went to um first game back uh first time at a WNBA game at Wintrust. Um, before my first day of, um, school this year, and I went to the Aces and Sky game. That was the game, um, where Liz was, like, beefing with everyone, and then the, the, the Twitter storm that night, it was really cool to be there. Sky. <laughs> That's what she does, though. That's yeah. why I'll, I'll forever love Liz as, as a player, because... She, that's who I wanted to be as a player. Someone who was so good and can talk so much shit and back up everything I said. I'd love that. That's also Paige. That's why I like Paige. That, that's the type. Of, that's why I love Diana. I, I like players like that. They're fun. That's what sports are about. 
I want to see um I want to see Liz and Paige go one on one. Honestly, I'm so ready for that. Liz Paige. Paige and Liz. It'd be terrifying. Let's but, go. Listen, if there's anybody who uh is like under six feet tall that would actually challenge Liz Cambage, it would probably be Paige. So. Paige. All right. Matt, I really, really, really appreciate that you took time away from whatever you were doing in this quarantine to hang out and be interviewed by a graduating high school senior. Um, I really enjoyed this a lot. Um, it was really awesome. Well, you are welcome. You. I hope this. I hope this helps you. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry that you are uh, also graduating in this, <laughs> but yeah. uh, let's I hope you can make the most of it. Hope you do well. This is for a paper. Um, this for, um, it's kind of like, um, oh my god, it's, it's a video, so. Okay. I'm cutting right. some of the interview down to make it 10 minutes, um, I just wanted to get as much as I can from you, because, you know, even though you're, um, always on Twitter talking, it's nice to hear, to see what no, you have to say. No, of course, listen. Thank you, thank you for picking me for it. I hope uh, I hope I did you well, and I hope you can use it. Maybe cut out the curses. I didn't yeah, really I think I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> My bad. I didn't, I didn't know this was going into video. No, you're good. So, all right. Well, thank you. That's all I got. Yep. Take care. Take care. See ya.